Kia ora and welcome to the Mountain Safety Council's Alpine Snow Skills Series. In this five-part series, we'll be talking to a professional mountain guide from the New Zealand Mountain Guides Association. He'll be teaching us basic alpine skills for snow slopes and winter terrain. Keep in mind that this video is not designed to replace a training course or hands-on practical experience. We recommend taking an alpine skills course from a professional provider or learning directly from competent friends or family. Since you'll potentially be in avalanche terrain, make sure to understand the current avalanche forecast for the region you'll be in. Carry the necessary avalanche rescue equipment and know how to use it. And get the training and knowledge to avoid avalanche hazards. For more info, go to avalanche.net.nz. With all cramponing technique, the spiky things are what keep us on the snow. Instead of like a skier that keeps the edges on the snow, if I do that with crampons, half of my points are not working. So when I'm cramponing, I put my foot down and I relax, particularly the downhill foot. I just relax the ankle a little bit so that all the points are touching. If I do this, I'm only getting half the effect out of my crampon. If I do this and relax, I'm getting the full crampon working for me. When I'm flat footing, I keep my feet wider than I would if I was walking down the street. If I have my feet close together, I can trip. So, wide stance. Give that a go. Is that all good? All good. A little bit wider. It's good. Shoulders back and your weight over your feet. Remember, wide stance. Like you've been riding a horse. Think John Wayne. So Jordan, next technique we're going to go through is what we call French pointing or French technique. The French call it cramponing um, and this is where the but when you're going sideways or up the hill the lower foot is side onto the hill. The upper foot still with a bit of separation is at 45 degree angle up the hill. So if I'm going at a diagonal up here I'm gaining height with good security, with one foot flat, one foot angled up the hill. When I go down the hill, I do the opposite. So my uphill foot is flat across, and my downhill foot is angled at 45 down. Still keeping the feet reasonably wide apart, still keeping the body upright. Avoid bending over. You want your center of body mass going directly between your feet. Another technique when you're wanting to go more direct up a hill, um, or the hill is starting to steepen up, is to use a combination of the French technique and front pointing. So your bottom foot goes straight across the hill, remembering to relax the ankle, and your uphill foot is straight into the hill. So, just like so. The great thing about this is you're only working one calf muscle at a time. So if I get tired, I can swap it and have the other foot flat. And that is conserving my energy. If we're coming down the slope and we're not diagonaling down, if we're going diagonal down we'll use a French technique. If we're coming straight down the slope we'll use a, um, a straight down the uh, slope technique called duck footing or au canard. Um, and that is feet at 45 degree angles. Your body weight, the important thing is your body weight goes directly down in between your feet. So. You're, you're, you're crouching, taking the pressure onto your thighs, like you're sitting on the loo. And you walk down the slope, keeping your feet 
nice and flat, angled and wide. So this way is a good way to go straight down a slope. Now, confidence in using your ice axe and crampons will come with practice, so make sure that you set aside time to practice these skills on a safe, low angle slope with plenty of run out. That way if something does go wrong, you're not in any danger. Now that we've covered these essential skills though, it's time to think about what to do if everything goes wrong. So in the final video of the series, we're going to look at how to self-arrest in order to save yourself if you slip on the snow and start sliding downhill. <laughs>